in part two of this series, we're going to go ahead and carry out the rest of, uh, of this problem associated with the, the way that you find the slip and the magnitude of slip and the orientation of slip associated with a fault plane when you have multiple units that are crossing that fault plane where you can measure the, the trends and plunges of those um, intersection lines. Okay, so after we have uh, this map view of our problem, which I, I redrew over here. So just to remind you, we had a fault that striked north 5 east. We've got a sandstone bed that strikes uh, south 70 east. And we have a dike that strikes north 50 west. And those beds were offset, or the, those features were offset on either side of a fault, where um, A prime and B prime are the units on the east side, and A and B are where the units intersect on the west side of the fault. So just to clarify, this is our view from above. This is our map view of the problem. And we have a scale of every one centimeter is 100 meters. OK. So to solve this problem on a stereo net, the first thing that you're going to have to do is plot the fault, the dike, and the sandstone bed, sorry it says coal bed, the sandstone bed on the stereo net and label each one. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you all know how to plot planes on a stereo net. Uh, just do that and label each one for what it is. Then it says, find the attitudes of the trace of the bed and the dike on the fault plane. What that means is it means what is the trend and plunge of those features on the fault plane. So here's our Plato fault plane. We know that the plane comes down to the east. So what are the trends and plunges of the line that represents this line and the one that represents this line, the dike and the sandstone bed? Okay. So what we do is we find the intersection point, because that represents a line on our stereo net, of the dike and the fault, and of the sandstone unit and the fault. To find the trends and the plunges of those lines, we rotate each one to the horizontal, count over to the primitive circle. That is our plunge. And I like to write my plunge in the same color as whatever that feature is that I'm working with. So here I've got a plunge of 28 degrees. And then you can go ahead and rotate up your sandstone unit intersection. Count over, you get a plunge of 24. Don't forget to mark the outside of your circle when you do that. If you don't mark the outside of your circle, you won't be able to get your trend. Rotate north back to north. And then count over, starting at the south because we're closer, to whatever you marked on the primitive circle. So for the sandstone unit, we made the mark. We said that it was plunging 24 degrees. And you can count over, and you get 44. So it's south, 44, east, 24. That's the plunge of the intersection between the sandstone unit and the fault. And then you can keep counting up to where you marked it for the dike. And you get south, 58, east, 28. And that's what. That's what we would get for the trend and plunge of the intersection with the dike and the fault. So here, where the problem asks for trace of the sandstone bed, we'd say south, 44 degrees east, 24 degrees. And for the trace of the dike, south, 58 degrees east, 28 degrees. Next, the problem asks us to find the rake of the traces of the bed and the dike. All right, well, rake is our difference from strike. So we're going to rotate it so that the fault is lined up with strike along this vertical great circle. And then we count the acute angle. So here, this is a really big arc, so it's probably an obtuse angle. So instead, I'm going to come down here from the south and count. And I count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 53 degrees. And my orientation is to the south, or southeast. And here 
I've got 60, 66 southeast. And I know that I'm dealing with the southeast because if I were to rotate back to the north, this is my southeast quadrant that I'm working. Uh, and, and these are representing points pointed down in that direction, or lines pointing down in that direction. So where it asks me for the rake of the sandstone bed, that one was 53 degrees southeast, and the rake of the dike was 66 degrees southeast. Um, if your problem that you're working with, these don't have the same orientation, like southeast and southeast, that's fine. It just means that your uh, features intersected the surface differently. So there's no, that doesn't have to be the case here. Don't worry about that. All right, now to, to get to our final answer, we have to draw a section parallel to the fault plane. So almost like a projection of both sides of the fault plane onto one plane with the same scale as part A. We're gonna use these rakes. Now, remember, rakes are distance from strike, not distance from north, okay? Distance from strike, angular distance from strike. Note that there will be two for each one line intersecting from each A, A prime, B, and B prime. So let's go ahead and do this. Also, don't worry about where I wrote 1500. Sometimes I have to make multiple attempts at making these films so that I don't either have a kid screaming in the background or I, I do it right and don't misspeak. Okay, so this was our map view. This is not map view. Okay, are it's still gonna we're still gonna draw a fault with the same orientation as what's here. But the important thing is don't think about this as being a view from above. This is not a view from above. This is you looking at the fault, looking at a plane that has the same strike as the fault that you're working with, and trying to imagine what would happen when you layer a surface expression of your east side, of your hanging wall, and a, an expression of your uh, foot wall onto one plane. Kind of like um, photoshopping two images together. That's how we can think about this. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is plot um, B, B prime, A, and A prime, and we do that with the same scale that we started with in our map view. So for us, B was at zero, B prime was at two and a half, A prime was at four centimeters, and A was at five centimeters. And we know that our fault plane is dipping down into the east, so on the east side, that's where we're gonna make um, our drawings. We are not gonna draw with the strike of these features. Instead, we're gonna draw rake. So for the sandstone beds, which are B and B prime, we're going to do 53 degrees to the southeast from strike. So don't align your protractor north, align it with your fault, and count 53 degrees out. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 53. Ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, fifty-three, and you can make these features as long as you want. Nobody cares. Okay, nice long lines. All right, A prime and A had rakes of sixty-six degrees to the southeast. So again, we're doing a difference from strike of 66 degrees. So it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 66. Right here. I'm going to go ahead and draw that. And 66 degrees for this one also. 10, 20. 
and they should be parallel. If you start drawing and it doesn't look parallel, go back, try again. Definitely don't guess. Don't don't do as I did. Do as as you're supposed to do. Okay. Then erase your excess. So here, these two lines intersect a and a prime. I'm gonna erase this extra bit. I'm not worried about that. Put a point where they intersect. And over here, I need to have these two lines intersect also. So I'm going to continue this, this one on down and put a point. Okay, now this, this intersection of A prime and B prime, that is the expression projected onto this plane of what's happening on the east side of the fault. So I'm going to call that E prime. I know it's east side because the primes were associated with the east. And the ones that are not prime were associated with the west. So this is what I'm going to call W prime. If I connect E prime and W prime, that is going to be the strike, or sorry, the slip amount associated with my fault because that is the difference between the piercing point or the matching point on the east side and the west side. Put zero there. I can measure this with the same scale as what I drew with because I drew everything here to scale. So here I have 11, 11.1, 11.2, 11 11.3 centimeters. So the length of the line is 11.3 centimeters, but I made sure that every one centimeter was 100 meters. So that's 1,130 meters of slip. It's a lot of slip. What type of fault does this represent? I'm going to say it represents a thrust. The reason for that is that I know that my fault dips down into the east. And I also know that this E prime is up relative to this W prime. So my fault plane dipped like this. The east side of my fault moved up relative to my west side foot wall. That makes this a thrust fault. Now it says to measure the rake of net slip with a protractor, the acute angle between fault slip, or between fault and the slip line. So what you're going to do to get that is continue this slip line up to your fault plane and I like to just dash it in. I don't like to do a solid line. And then measure the acute angle for that. So measure this angle. And it's not the angle from north, it's the angle from the fault strike. So this is my point that I'm going to center my protractor on. And looks like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 64 degrees southeast. So my rake amount, 64 degrees, and my rake orientation, southeast. Now we're going to plot a line with the same rake on my stereo net along the arc representing the fault plane. Okay. So I have my fault oriented um, with the vertically oriented great circle and I'm going to count up 64. It's very close to the to the dike intersection point. Okay. And I'm going to find the trend and plunge of that point, which is a trend and plunge of a line. So let's see. It's 10, 20, 26, 27 degrees. This is the one I want to mark. 28, 
27 degrees. I rotate back down to the south, count over to this, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 55, south, 55, east, 27. That is the trend and plunge. South, 55, east, plunging 27 degrees. Okay, so what this means is that I have slipped, my fault has slipped 1,130 meters, and it has slipped in the direction of south, 55 east, 27. So if I went up to that fault surface and I, well, let's just do it. Here's my fault surface. I know my fault is, is coming down to the east. That means that I, if I came up and looked for slicken lines, those slicken lines should be trending south, 55 east, plunging 27 degrees. So those would be, those would be my slicken lines right there. And this fault block would have moved up in that direction. So those, those marks would be indicating how much that had moved up. All right. Thanks for watching.